want to, um, first of all, thank the uh, the opportunity to be able to share this. This is um, an incredible, incredible thing. Unfortunately, the city of Norfolk in our region uh, got to understand deeply where it says in Tehillim, Hoshini Elohim Kibo'umayim Adnafesh. Save me, O God, for water has come up to my soul. Devati vizen mtsula ve'imamad basi mamaki mayim sheboles shetafasni. I have sunk in muddy depths. There is no no place to stand. I've come into the deep water, and the current has swept me away. We said this to build the hillum over and over and over again in its entirety last week, and I can tell you what happened. Maybe some of you have seen on. The news, much of the news was fake news, mamish. Much of the news was not true. I want to try to just tell the story a little bit to understand the tragedy that occurred in Norfolk and how we lost one of our incredible chaverim um, just this last week. Last Tuesday, a group of boys, my son, my 10-year-old son being one of them, middle school boys from Norfolk were in a camp. The camp was run by two rabbis. Um, Rabbi Lippmann and Rabbi Bauman. And they decided on that day they were taking the boys to a nature reserve. And the nature reserve is hiking and is beautiful, it's incredible, and it goes right by the Atlantic Ocean. It was not a public beach. And they walked into the nature reserve and they did some incredible hiking. They walked over sand dunes, they came over to an open beach, there was playing ball over there on the open beach. And they were waiting, not swimming, in the water right by the ocean's edge and they were playing over there like boys do. We're talking about middle school boys. At that point, a few of the boys were playing and a very significant wave came from the ocean. And one of the boys, the rabbi's son, Rabbi Sinder Haber, his son, of Eli Haber, uh, who's 11 years old, something like that, he was swept out. He was picked up, the wave got him, and he was swept out to sea. And this all happened very, very quickly, but immediately Rabbi Lipman, one of the two rabbis, he turned around, he saw Ellie being pulled away. One of the boys, a boy uh, named Schoenfeld, he jumped in after him to try to rescue him without even thinking. The water picked up that boy and, and brought him down, slammed him down. He had to go to the hospital. Later on, he ended up going the ambulance to the hospital. Another boy, his brother, jumped in after the brother. The rabbis are trying to help the boys stay out of the water. While that's happening, the L.A. Haber is being pulled out to sea. Rabbi Lippmann tried to grab the L.A. Haber, could not grab him, and turned to Rabbi Bauman and said, Rabbi Bauman, I'm not strong enough of a swimmer. Can you, can you grab L.A. Haber? Rabbi Bauman, without thinking, with, 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 with his full suit on, jumped into the water and started going after L.A. Haber. And here's where the story gets very, very strange. At that moment, from nowhere, and we're talking about a beach that I'm telling you, I personally was on, on Sunday, along with people trying to find Rabbi Bauman's body. We were on this secluded beach on the Atlantic Ocean, a place where nobody goes, where you can walk for miles and not see another human being. For an hour and a half, I didn't see another human being on Sunday, this past week, other than the search party. Somehow, there is a non-Jewish person who happened to be, who nobody saw coming, ran into the water, grabbed a board from the ground, jumped in, picked up two boys, put them on the board, and schlepped them from the, from the place where they were being pulled out to sea, managed to pull them back to the shore. As soon as the two boys got back to the shore, the man disappeared. Nobody knows where he came from, nobody knows where he went, the 20 boys all said afterwards that they turned around to look for the man and he disappeared. The distance from the water to the sand dunes is about 75, 100 feet. He, he was just gone. He was nowhere. Rabbi Lipman looked around to find him as well and he was gone. He was looking for him because Rabbi Bauman was missing. When the boys came back, unfortunately Rabbi Bauman did not. The 20 boys were standing at the shoreline. We're talking about 4th graders to 8th graders, 20 boys. And they looked out, they were into the water, and they saw Rabbi Bauman. He went under the water. 
he popped up, according to the testimony of a few of the boys, he popped up one more time, he saw his head, and then he went down again. This is their Rebbe. You have to understand, this was these boys' Rebbe. They watched him drown. His son was one of the boys. It was a Travis, it was, it was, it was an unbelievable, unbelievable event. I, got, I was called, or Rebbe called me, and I, and I got in my car and I flew over there as fast as I could. And at that point, Rabbi Lippmann obviously was beside him. He, he, he was not normal. He couldn't really take care of the children. We all came to help. And we brought vans and we brought the boys and there were detectives already and there was, of course the press was there. And immediately, of course, we had to take care of the children. But immediately the press got into our face and started to immediately, within minutes, publish lies and stories there were no red flags. There was no warning. There were no signs. Yes, there was a nature reserve. And if you drive into any nature reserve, there's a whole list of rules you drive in. I'm sure on that list it says no swimming somewhere. But there was no red flags. It was not that the media said it was. And we ended up getting there and getting these children and taking them home. The media began to... to try to create a story, to sensationalize the story, and we realized that we had to change the story. But the truth is, my friends, that the story changed itself. And this is really the message that I want to share with you today. Because immediately everybody in our community and beyond began to pick up pieces of a puzzle that needed to be solved. Chai Lifeline flew in a whole team of incredible, incredible people. Mamash Tzadikim that came into the community, counselors, people to sit with our children, my son and our family and, and the adults in the community and really gave us an incredible, what High Lifeline did was absolutely incredible. They stayed for days, they stayed for, for almost a whole week to help our community. And everybody picked up a piece. Rabbi Bauman's wife, his widow and five children who were all sitting there, the, the entire community came around them. But as soon as everybody got home, Everybody knew what was going on. As soon as everybody got home, an incredible thing happened. Number one, we have a Baruch Hashem. We have about 115 children in our school. Most of them were still at home. Some of them were at camp. Every child who was at home, when the parents came home, when I came home and dropped a lot of these children off, every kid was saying Tehillim. My children were sitting in our house and they were crying and saying Tehillim over what was likely to be the case for Rabbi Bauman. Nobody knew. They were, they were still searching for her. Maybe he'll live somewhere. Nobody knew. But then what happened next was incredible. About two days later, the Coast Guards began to say, you know what, we can't search forever. This happened on Tuesday. On Thursday, the Coast Guards said, look, we're going to have to stop the search. <coughs> but all of a sudden, the entire East Coast Jewish community mobilized. With the help of Jordan Sloan and other people in our community, and Aaron Sloan, his son, Rabbi Sloan, his son, we mobilized something that I've never seen before in my life. Unbelievable. Planes, multiple search planes, ships, boats, jet skis, people with ATVs. Things showed up on the beach. The Coast Guard said they've never seen anything like it before. They reported to Coast Guards around the country. They said nothing like this. They took videos and pictures. They said nothing like this has happened. They couldn't believe what happened over there. All of a sudden from Maryland, people drove through the night to bring boats and Jews were on these jet skis. It was something like you've never seen anything like this in your life. Mika, Amcha, Yisrael, the Jewish people came together like, like, it was a miracle. It was unbelievable. The commanding officer of the Coast Guard came into the shoal, bawling in tears. This officer, and he comes in and he says, I don't know who you people are. I've never met a Jew before. I don't know, I don't know Jewish people. But I'm telling you, if this is what the Jewish people are like, I want to be a Jew. In his uniform, he stood there in the middle. He didn't talk to the whole community. He was in the rabbi and a few people standing in a circle. Unbelievable what happened over there. And he said, I, don't, I can't stop the search now. They published that they stopped the search. They never stopped the search. Why didn't they stop the search? He said that these people are driving through the night and they're coming up with planes and they're coming up with ATVs. I can't stop searching. So the Virginia Beach police, police and the Coast Guard kept searching three days after they said they were going to stop searching. They never stopped the search. It then came to Shabbos. Many of the people went home. 
But Motzei Shabbos, people drove through the night from Maryland, from Silver Spring, from New York. And all of a sudden, another huge round of boats appeared in the Atlantic Ocean. All Jews, Shomrim, and all these other organizations show up. Myself and many, many others started walking the beach starting early in the morning. For seven hours, I was combing the beach with people walking up and down, thinking a body was going to come, sank the hill, and it was an unbelievable matzah. And as soon as I personally left the beach late in the afternoon, one of the ships from Silver Spring, I believe it was, found Rabbi Bauman's body floating in the water. What we saw this past week in Norfolk, Virginia, I think is just a piece, a sliver of the power of the Jewish people. We ended up changing the story. The story became not what happened with those boys and these two rabbis, but the local ABC affiliate, Arab Shabbos, called me up. And they said, we have a new story we would like to run. We want to understand what is up with the Jewish people. And how is it? Why do you care so much about the body of a dead person? We give up. A day after, the Coast Guard gives up. A day and a half after our search begins. You don't give up. Why do you care? And we did a huge story in Virginia on the news that was featured about why the Jewish people care. Why the Jewish people care about the holiness of a goof. How it holds in the Shoma, how it holds God's purpose, and how, what that, how important that really is to us. I began by reading a piece at the beginning of this Capitol to Hillam, Psalm of Tess. I'd like to conclude by reading one more Pasuk from this Capitol to Hillam. Right after it says, I have sunk in muddy depths and there is no place to stand, I have come into deep water and the current has swept me away. It says the following. Baba Misaaros Roshi Sinai Chinam Atum Mitzmisai Ovai Sheker Asholo Gazalti Az Ashi. Those who hate me for nothing are more numerous than the hairs of my head. Mightier are those who would cut me off who are my enemies because of lies. What I did not steal, I will then return. My friends in Norfolk, the conversation is not just about this matzah. Conversation is that as we begin the three weeks, very, very, very soon, this is a lesson for us. This matzav, as hor- horrible and horrific as it is, and as I have to come home and have conversations with my son about his Rebbe that he saw drown in the ocean, we come and we say, why do we hate? Why do others hate? And what can we do to solve this problem? Maybe this is a lesson Rabbi Bauman, the tzaddik who passed away, who gave an unbelievable, his whole life to Torah, his whole life to our children. Maybe this is something we can take out of it, a little sliver, that we can make our three weeks more powerful, we can think of Rabbi Bauman, all of our and these 20 boys who watched the Rebbe drown, and Yemir Tashem, and this Swiss, we should be able to build a base and make this from here, Rabbi Amen. Amen.